Greetings dear aspirants welcome to today's current affairs session of civil sphere today we'll be discussing about enam about atal bhujal yojana about guru padma sambhava and about coal wetlands under our prelims topic and we'll be discussing one main topic and one editorial topic today so the main topic is the various uh, mhrd schemes for the students of the economically weaker sections of the society and under our editorial topic we'll be discussing about uh, the relevance of uh, india iran relations nothing but the topic the road to peace runs to tehran so let's move on with uh, first prelims topic of the day enam so uh, with regards to this topic you need to know something about enam and uh, who implements this particular enam and which ministry and about uh, the implementer nothing but the uh, small farmers agri business consortium so uh, let's move to the news so about enam it is uh, basically a pan india electronic trading portal so it will network all the existing agricultural produce marketing committees or the mandis to in order to create a unified national market for the agricultural commodities because as of now there is uh, no proper integrated uh, market uh, in uh, market infrastructure in india so the markets are basically uh, pertaining to every states at the state level only it is not uh, very much integrated so this enam tries to bring all the markets and integrate them so the lead agency for implementation will be the small farmers agri business consortium so we'll be looking about this in our later slide and this particular uh, enam comes under the ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare so what is the vision of this uh, particular enam as i already told the existing markets are disintegrated so we need an integrated market so streamlining of procedures across the integrated markets so in order to bring a state unified license for all those uh, uh, operators under different uh, mandis and removing information asymmetry between the buyers and the sellers because none would be knowing what is the actual uh, trending price of that particular day so it uh, aims to uh, re remove this particular asymmetry and it will promote real time price discovery based on actual demand and supply for that particular day so this is the vision of this particular enam so who are the stakeholders under this particular enam uh, portal so the agricultural uh, produce and livestock market committees uh, from different states as of now 16 states and two union territories have joined this enam portal and the farmers will be uh, the stakeholders and the traders who are involved in trading uh, pro process in the mandis will be the uh, stakeholders and the farmer producer organizations which have been formed under this uh, particular uh, sfac will also be the stakeholders so who are farmer uh, producer organization they are nothing but a group of farmers who join together in order to sell their produce in order to market their produce so they'll form an organization and that is called as a farmer producers organization similar to our cooperative marketing and mandi boards mandi boards are uh, nothing but uh, for uh, there'll be a, a board for the existing mandis in a particular state so since 16 states and two uts have joined all those uh, mandi boards under these states uh, would also become uh, stakeholders for this particular enam so what is the current affairs the current affairs uh, is that the interstate uh, trade on enam portal is gaining momentum so as of now 21 enam mandis of eight states have, uh, are, are being indulged in this particular interstate trade because when the markets were uh, not really unified it was a, a big headache for uh, trading between the different uh, mandis of different states now uh, because of the introduction of this uh, enam uh, communication between uh, different stakeholders in a particular mandi has improved that is the first step and second step is now the communication between uh, the different mandis in a particular state say state tamil nadu has improved and after this now uh, the mandis between the different states a uh, communication have started to improve so that the trading is going on between mandis of different states so this is the success of this particular ena portal and uh, you need to know about the implementer the small farmers agri business consortium so it was basically formed as an autonomous society under the societies registration act of 1860 so this particular sfac implements several schemes of the government of india the notable ones are the delhi kisan mandi scheme your equity grant scheme for the farmers venture capital assistance scheme for the farmers and your farmers producer organization scheme which i discussed uh, so these are the uh, very important schemes along with this enam which is being implemented by the small farmers agri business consortium so please keep this in mind this will be helpful in prelims point of view and uh, one more notable point is that this particular small farmers agri business consortium is the central procurement agency for the pulses and the oil seeds uh, like the food corporation of india which procures all the cereals like rice and wheat 
uh, the major cereals. Similarly, uh, SFAC will procure the pulses and oil seeds. So this is also an important point with respect to prelims point of view. So this is all about enum that you need to know. Let's move on to our next topic, Atal Bhujal Yojana. So uh, you need to know something about this particular scheme, which ministry is implementing the scheme and what is the type of the scheme, if it is central sector scheme or a centrally sponsored scheme. And the recent current affairs is that the World Bank has approved this particular 6,000 crore uh, project. So uh, what is Atal Bhujal Yojana? Split it into two, Bhu. Bhu is nothing but Bhumi or Earth. And Jal is water. So it uh, uh, pertains something to the ground water. So you have to decode this or decipher this way. So it uh, deals about sustainable management of ground water with uh, two things. One is active community participation. Uh, and also by developing the necessary infrastructure that is required. So what are those targeted areas? They are water stressed areas and over exploited areas where the water is very much exploited that uh, a drought like condition will happen. So all these areas have been identified by the Central Groundwater Authority. So this particular scheme is a central sector scheme and uh, it will come under the Ministry of Water Resources, River Development and Ganga Rejuvenation. So the funding pattern here is 50 is to 50 between the Government of India and the World Bank and now the current affairs is that World Bank has approved this particular project so it will uh, give 50% of its share towards this particular 6000 crore project. And uh, what are the activities under this particular Atal Bhujal Yojana? So, the first and foremost would be the formation of water user association and it will also work towards uh, creating the necessary groundwater infrastructure and uh, it will monitor and disseminate the groundwater data, it will do water budgeting, it will prepare and implement the gram panchayat wise water security plans and it will also carry forward the IEC activities, nothing but your information, education and communication activities. So these are the activities that would be implemented under this Atal Bhujal Yojana. So uh, please uh, keep uh, this in mind that it is a central sector scheme, which ministry and what is the funding pattern. So World Bank is funding this particular project. Let's move on to our next topic, Guru Padma Sambhava. So it has been recently in news, uh, two different news. So first news is that the conference exhibition uh, to celebrate the life of Guru Padma Sambhava was held in New Delhi. And uh, the Odisha Chief Minister Mr. Naveen Patnaik has unveiled the statue of Guru Padma Sambhava in Bharampur in the state of Odisha. So the key words that you need to know about uh, this particular topic is know about the personality and what are the important sites and important events associated with this personality. So about Guru Padma Sambhava is called as Guru Renpoche. So he is uh, very famous in the Himalayan states, in the uh, countries of India, in Tibet and also in Bhutan. So he is uh, said that, it is said that he was the founder of the Nyingma school of the Tibetan Buddhism. So there are four schools of Tibetan Buddhism that we need not know, just know that he has found the Nyingma school of uh, Tibetan Buddhism. It is also said that, said that he has spread the Vajrayana form of Buddhism in the country of Bhutan. Now the Vajrayana Buddhism is a state uh, religion of the country of Bhutan. And uh, he is also rev uh, revered as the second Buddha by the Tibetan Buddhists. So what are the associated sites and events in India and also in Bhutan? Now the recent news is, uh, one more news is that uh, it is the 50th year of a formal India-Bhutan uh, diplomatic relations. So Guru Padma Sambhava is equally important under this context. So the associated sites are Revalsar Lake uh, from in the uh, district of Mandi in the state of Himachal Pradesh. Because it is said that only from this lake that Guru Padma Sambhava uh, started moving towards Tibet in order to spread Buddhism. And the second uh, very famous uh, thing uh, event is the Hemis festival that happens in uh, the district of Ladakh in the state of Jammu and Kashmir. So Cham dance is also performed in this particular Hemis festival. So this festival is celebrated uh, to is being celebrated to celebrate the birth anniversary of uh, Guru Padma Sambhava. And uh, if you see in Bhutan, the very famous Paro uh, Monastery is associated uh, with this particular Guru Padma Sambhava because it is said that he has meditated in this monastery for three years. So it is also called as the Tiger Nest mona uh, Monastery. And uh, you need to know what is the meaning of Guru Padma Sambhava. So it is a lotus and Sambhava is born. So it is lotus born. So he was born out of a lotus. And Rin Poche means precious Guru. Precious Guru. So this is all uh, the very important facts that you need to know about this uh, uh, particular personality Guru Padma Sambhava. 
So let's move on to our next prelims topic, coal wetlands. Under this uh, wetlands topic, you just need to know about this uh, location of this particular wetland. What is the ecosystem that is prevailing in this particular wetland? And if this particular wetland is a uh, famous Ramsar site, designated Ramsar site, and if it is designated as an important bird area, and what are the activities that are being uh, undertaken in this particular coal wetlands? Now, the current affairs news is that the uh, fish count... Uh, as uh, 82 species of fish count has been recorded in this coal fish, uh, coal wetlands. So this is the recent news. So with regards to location, so this is the terrain map of the state of Kerala. And coal wetlands is located in the two districts of Kerala, namely the Trishu district and Malapuram district of Kerala. So this forms uh, the part of central Kerala. And coal along with Vemanad wetlands has been designated as a Ramsar site in the year 2002. So your Vemanad is, uh, Vemanad uh, wetland is located near Ernakulam or Kochi. So all these forms a part of central Kerala. And uh, this wetland is basically a catchment area of two rivers uh, flowing in that particular region. The rivers Ketcheri and Karivanur. So, uh, in the uh, northern boundary, it is being uh, bordered by the Bharatapura river and in the southern boundary, it is being bordered by the Chalakudi river, which is, which is just located to the north of Kochi. So, this is uh, something that you need to know about the location. And with regards to ecosystem, so it is the largest brackish humid tropical wetland ecosystem. So, it is located near the tropics. So, we are uh, mostly uh, likely to experience a humid climate and brackish means salt water. wetland ecosystem. So this coal wetlands is basically fragmented wetlands. Uh, they are fragmented into three areas, which means it is not a continuous patch of wetland. A wetland will be located here, another wetland here, so in the nearby. And uh, this uh, wetland will remain submerged for half the part of year, nothing but six months for year. So when there is monsoon, this particular wetland will be uh, completely uh, flooded with water. For the remaining six months, some activities uh, like agriculture and your lotus farming or fishing, duck rearing would be uh, would take place. And this particular uh, wetland acts as a natural reservoir by controlling the floods, and it will act as a natural carbon sink and it will also recharge the groundwater of the nearby areas especially the city of Trishur and its suburbs and uh, this particular uh, wetland along with Vemanad was designated as a Ramsar site in the year 2002 as I already told and it is also a designated important bird area and uh, very famous birds uh, the native birds and also the migratory birds have been recorded in this particular area and this particular wetland also falls in the path of your central Asian uh, flyway. So, uh, as I told, one activity that needs to be discussed is the exhaustive clay mining that is being happening in this particular area. Because of this clay mining, uh, only the top layer needs to be removed, but because of uh, excessive clay mining, the entire ecology of that area is being affected. So, this was also in the recent news. So, this is all that you need to know about coal wetlands from prelims point of view. And let's uh, move on to our uh, main topic. Uh, the schemes, the different schemes uh, under the Ministry of Human Resource Development for the educational development of the economically weaker sections of the society. So, there are some five schemes that has been uh, given uh, by the Government of India in Lok Sabha and that has been recorded in your Public Information Bureau. So, uh, those five schemes are First is your central sector scheme for scholarship for the college and university students and special scholarship for those students residing in the state of Jammu and Kashmir. And third is the central sector interest subsidy scheme. And fourth is your uh, fee waiving schemes that is uh, at present being followed in your IITs, the Indian Institute of Technologies. And the fifth one is the interest subvention scheme under the Vidya Lakshmi uh, program. So we'll see what this Vidya Lakshmi program is also about. So, under your uh, first scheme, uh, the eligibility is 8 lakhs per annum. So, if a person is earning less than 8 lakhs per annum, uh, they'll be eligible for a scholarship of rupees 10,000 for the first three years and rupees 20,000 for the fourth and the fifth year. And uh, for Jammu and Kashmir uh, students, again, the eligibility is 8 lakhs per annum. So, here uh, they will uh, get a scholarship uh, between 1.3 lakhs and 4 lakhs per annum in order to pursue their IS studies. It can either be in Jammu and Kashmir or it can also be outside the state of Jammu and Kashmir. And third is the central sector interest subsidy scheme. Under this, a full interest subsidy during a moratorium period 
uh, on the loans would be given. So this would be up to rupees seven point five lakh. And your uh, fourth uh, scheme is the fee waiving schemes that is uh, at present being followed in the IITs. First one is uh, the uh, the students from the scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, and your physically uh, challenged uh, students would get a complete fee waiver. And uh, the second uh, uh, fee waiver is the for the most economically backward students where their family income is less than 1 lakh per annum. They will get full remission of the fee. And if uh, their income is between 1 and 5 lakhs per annum, they will get a remission of 2 thirds of the fee. And uh, all those students who have access to loans under the Vidya Lakshmi scheme will have an interest free loan. So for the remaining portion of the fee that has to be paid by these students. And the fifth one is the Vidya Lakshmi portal. So this was introduced by this present government uh, for the students seeking the education loan. So it will be a basically a single window platform where the students can have access to the loans of different banks that are being provided by them. And also for the government scholarships that is being handed over by the government. So the interest sub subvention on the educational loans for all students uh, who have been admitted into the undergraduate courses and your five year integrated uh, courses is being given. So subvention is basically uh, the government paying the interest on behalf of the students. And apart from this, the government also conducts uh, coaching schemes for all the students from the other backward classes, your SCs, STs and other minority community students. So some coachings are remedial coaching and coaching to uh, uh, in order to appear for your net exam or the state level uh, exams and services coaching for students to appear to the all India services or the state services. And apart from this, uh, for uh, the students uh, who are being given the interest subsidy or the scholarship, the payment happens to the digital mode. So it is being processed by the public financial management system portal under the Ministry of Finance. And the scholarship on the interest subsidy is being released through the direct benefit transfer mode for the students so that there is transparency in the system and there is also accountability in the system. And uh, the recent one is the 103rd Constitutional Amendment Act. So this Constitutional Amendment Bill was passed in the Lok Sabha and was given as in by the President. Now it is being termed as the 103rd Constitutional Amendment Act. So it has amended the Articles uh, 15 and 16 of Indian Constitution and it uh, will provide uh, for 10% of reservation to the economically weaker sections of the society in matters of education and also employment. So this is also a big boost to those students who are from the economically weaker sections of the society. And uh, this 10% uh, reservation will not disturb the existing quota reservation that is uh, being given for the other backward classes and also for the SEs and the STs. So these are some of the schemes of the central government for uh, the welfare of the students from the economically weaker sections of the society. Let's move on to our next uh, topic, the editorial topic, the road to peace runs through Tehran. So Tehran is the capital of the country of Iran. So under this uh, particular editorial topic, the author has discussed about the importance of Afghan uh, security for the different countries in Asia and also for the uh, important powers of the world. And uh, the author has also discussed about US engagements in uh, Afghanistan at present and uh, the role of regional powers and uh, the author has also discussed the ties between India and Iran and between Iran and USA and about its pros and cons, the positives and the adverse impacts of uh, the present uh, US-Iran relations and some prospective suggestions that has been given by the author for Iran, India and US alike. So uh, let's move on to our editorial. As you know, Iran and Afghan is very strategically located. So it will act as a pivot to the entire Asia and also to Europe. If you see now, Iran is very strategically located because it has access to this Hormuz Strait, Strait of Hormuz, where majority of your oil trade happens. And it can also act as a gateway to Russia. And already your uh, international north-south uh, transport corridor is also uh, in place. And now India is also developing the Chabahar port in the country of Iran. So Iran is very strategically located. But now there is some disturbance in this particular Central Asia because of the Afghan country, because of the terrorism that is happening in Afghan. And also the government is very much weak. So the author has given some suggestions for India to improve this particular security aspect of Afghanistan. So uh, 
she has told that the author has told that india has to engage iran and us in order to bring stability in the country of afghanistan so this is the crux of this particular topic under this the author has uh, first discussed the different uh, engagements of the country of usa so first uh, first and foremost the author has told that india should try to dissuade the us from its uh, thought process uh, to treat india uh, so into treat china russia and iran as its enemies because the present government under uh, donald trump is actually treating china russia and iran as its enemies it has almost reverted all those policies of the previous us government that was in place under barack obama so uh, the author has taken uh, some of the negotiations uh, that was previously done by the previous regime in the us say in the year 2014 16 russia and usa had arranged talks for a peaceful uh, or a stable afghan afghan peace process so that it was called the 6 plus 1 group which included countries afghan india Ch in uh, uh, china russia iran pakistan and usa and if you see in the year november 2018 uh now the present government has also started the peace negotiations with the taliban that is present in afghanistan so india also should actively take part in this engagements and now uh india is not engaging military military wise uh in the state of uh in the country of afghanistan but it can go through a peaceful diplomatic uh negotiations with the countries of iran and also with usa and the author has discussed the role of regional powers because if you see uh all those regional powers in asia namely your china india and russia all have stakes in this particular country of afghanistan because a peaceful and a stable afghanistan will lead to a peaceful asia it will lead to a improved uh, trade and other economic uh, improvements in that particular region and uh the author has uh, told that uh, there are doubts that uh, if afghan is not stable then the uh, extremist exports from the country of pakistan will increase either towards afghanistan side or towards india side so it would probably increase and uh, the author has then discussed the ties between the india and iran so author has told that the india must engage iran through diplomatic relations because it is not willing to engage militarily in the country of afghanistan now there are some positive indicators in our india uh, iran relations so the first one is the engagement of india in towards developing the chabahar port so this was initiated by india and uh, india iran and russia are together the founding members of this international north south transport corridor so this would increase the trade prospects for both iran and uh, india in the long run if the afghan country is also very stable and uh next prominently the author has discussed about the uh, positives of uh, the iran us relations and the adverse uh, adversities of the iran us relations so first let's see let's see the positives so together with uh, usa and india iran supported to overthrow the taliban in the 2001 in the year 2001 so post this uh, twin tower uh, destruction by uh, the al qaeda group uh, in uh, new york so post uh, this Uh, as a part of international uh, negotiations that followed in bonn in the year 2001 iran supported the installation of hamid karzai as the president of afghanistan and also exclusion of taliban from indian uh, afghan polity now uh, uh, since uh, 2005 us uh, star us a started imposing sanctions in the country of iran now the iran which actually uh, supported excluding taliban from the afghan uh, polity started supporting taliban by giving them arms and money in order to promote terrorism in the western portion of afghanistan now this is the claim made by the usa but it was not able to actually uh, validate this claim so till date iran has opposed the us presence largely because of the fear that us might target iran because now uh, in the name of improving the stability in the country of afghanistan us has uh, deployed its military in the country of afghanistan now iran sees that as a threat and now uh, uh, the usa is telling it will pull out of all its army from the state of afghanistan and uh, even before that uh when uh iran felt that there is a perceived threat that us would actually attack it the afghan premier told that uh, afghan would not allow usa uh, to attack uh, iran so that was a promise given by afghan and if you see in the year 2018 december month 
uh, Iran initiated talks with Taliban with the knowledge of Afghan government. But now uh, US is actually criticizing this uh, because it tells that formally it is engaging with Taliban in order to create a terrorism like situation in Afghanistan. But Iran is vehemently denying this. So these are some of the adverse uh, ties that is happening between Iran and the USA. And now uh, you, uh, USA again uh, reverted this particular uh, deal with uh, uh, Iran and now again it has imposed sanctions on Iran. So now the uh, ties between Iran and USA is very complex and very critical. Now, uh, the author has given some uh, prospective suggestions in order to improve the USA-Iran ties and also India-Iran ties in order to have a peaceful Afghanistan. So, some of the win-win prospects for the country of Iran is, Iran could uh, actually gain by strengthening the ties. Uh, trade ties with a secure Afghanistan. Right now, in the uh, since 2017, Iran has replaced uh, the country of Pakistan as the largest trade partner of the country of Afghanistan. Now, if Afghanistan is further more uh, peaceful and uh, having a stable government, then it will further help Iran in order to uh, have a proper uh, trade ties with uh, the secure uh, Afghanistan. So, this will also prove beneficial for uh, Iran amidst this US sanctions that is at present being uh, over Iran. And now uh, it can also be a win-win prospect for the country of USA if it uh, very positively engages with Iran in order uh, to have a stable Afghanistan. So US would also gain because of this, because of the geopolitical importance of Iran, because it is acting as a hub connecting the Central Asia, South Asia, Southeast Asia and also your Caucasus uh, which is located in the Eastern Europe. So, USA engagement in Iran would be welcomed by the America's European allies as well because they were not very much supportive of the US action of imposing sanctions of Iran in this year. So, US should also utilize this Afghan card in order to improve its ties with Iran. Now, uh, the author has uh, very strongly told that uh, still America should not uh, think that it's superpower. It should drop its uh, superpower uh, thinking and should start actively engaging with China and also with Russia and also with Iran. Because if you see with Iran now, the sanctions are there, economic sanctions are there on uh, Iran. If you see with China now, the trade war is happening between US and China. And of, also if you see with uh, Russia, the INF treaty has been cancelled by both the countries of USA and also Russia. Now the climate is very severe, but uh, the USA should drop its uh, superpower concept and come to uh, come in order to have a proper relationship with the, all these three countries. Now, uh, the author has also suggested that Iran should actually, uh, India should actually uh, broker between the country of USA and Iran for a regional security. So, this will also improve the regional security and it will also improve the status of India and also Iran as a regional superpower. So, this would be further enhanced. So, these are uh, some of the points that has been given by the author in our editorial. So, all these points are very valid and it will be very helpful for your main. So, please have a look at it. With this, we are winding up our today's topic. Please do like, comment and share the video. And please subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy channel for latest videos and updates. Stay focused and motivated friends. Thank you.